Hello and welcome to our spring series webinar. Today we will be sharing updates about our dual language designation work and progress. Thank you for being with us. We'd like to start by briefly introducing the dual language team. My name is Athena Jimenez Manalo and I am one of the dual language coordinators on the professional development team. Hi everyone, I'm Yolanda Arellano, uh, another dual language coordinator on the professional development team at DCYF. Hi everyone, my name is Charlotte Campbell. I'm on the Early Achievers team at DCYF and I am our government and partnership liaison. The Fair Start for Kids Act, Section 305, calls on DCYF to establish a dual language designation that will provide funding awards to ECAP, early ECAP, and licensed or certified providers who are accepting state subsidy. Funding awards from this act can be used to increase wages for individual staff who provide bilingual instruction, professional development and training, curricula, materials, and other related expenses. We are working with a diverse external advisory group to develop the criteria for a designation. As Athena mentioned, the designation is a collaborative process that includes internal and external advisory groups. The external team's work includes identifying the criteria and priorities for a dual language designation, identifying training pathways and necessary supports to help meet the designation, as well as planning how and to whom the designation will be awarded. The DCYF teams will determine the procedures and policies for implementing the designation in a way that is socially just and in coordination with other funding opportunities through the Fair Start for Kids Act. The internal team will also set up the IT systems that will be required for this designation. The external advisory group first met in December and identified priorities and guiding principles for dual language around messaging and communication, partnerships with tribes, family engagement, cultural responsiveness, and support for programs and staffing. These initial priorities have guided our work. The advisory group met in December, February, March, April, and will meet again in June. The group work began by identifying dual language designation priorities and non-negotiables. Once the group was rooted in purpose, a provider survey was co-designed to give the group and DCYF a better idea of the dual language efforts that are happening across the state. The group then brainstormed ideas to develop designation standards in alignment with DCYF, local, and national resources. Recently, the group provided ideas for ways to use this year's startup funding. We will go through each of these accomplishments in the following slides. The group's remaining work includes co-designing a family focus group, a provider design group, messaging to coaches, identifying training opportunities, and finalizing the designation by June 30th, 2022. The advisory group co-created a survey to child care providers that would give DCYF insight into the dual language efforts happening in childcare. We received 125 responses from providers around the state. This map illustrates the childcare centers represented in the survey. The group helped distribute the survey to their networks and we had 58 respondents to the English survey 66 respondents for the Spanish survey, and one respondent for the Somali survey. Most of the respondents work in a family home program serving 1 to 12 students and speak a home language other than English. According to respondents, Spanish, Chinese, Somali, Arabic, indigenous dialects, and Amharic are the most common languages represented by children and teachers in their program. The most common strategies used by respondents to support children and families who may not speak English were providing classroom materials and family communications in multiple languages, 
translation or interpretation support from staff, and providing instruction in the home language. Respondents indicated that funding for classroom materials, wages, training, and planning time are the most important supports for their dual language program. One of the identified uses for startup funding to support dual language programs and professionals includes membership to the WIDA Early Years Consortium. WIDA stands for World Class Instructional Design and Assessment. WIDA is a research-based and educator-informed research resource hub for professionals who work with multilingual children and families. WIDA boasts an international consortium that includes over 500 schools across more than 100 countries. A K-12 consortium in the United States, of which 41 states are members, with Washington becoming the latest member in 2021, and the Early Years Consortium that has nine member states since its inception in 2018. Washington will be the 10th state to join the Early Years Consortium. The WIDA Early Years Annual Membership will support state and early learning professionals. This membership includes four live webinars to raise state awareness across the state of the benefits of membership and the resources that are available. The membership also provides e-learning opportunities to an unlimited number of early learning professionals across the state. Once in the WIDA portal, early learning professionals can access resources, marketing materials, and other printables in variables, various languages. All you need to do is sign up for a free account. DCYF will announce when we are officially part of the consortium and when, when the webinars will take place. The advisory group is made up of many partners and we send a huge thank you to all of those who are contributing in formal and informal ways. Thank you so much for being with us for this webinar. If you have any questions or comments, you can please send an email to any of the email addresses listed on screen. Thank you so much.